Welcome to Whatever Works, our unique fortnightly podcast in which we talk about whatever works in our lives and in the lives of our community members. Find us at whateverworks.works. And why not join our community? Simply search for Whatever Works at mewe.com and get stuck in. When I turn the power switch to off, I get a message saying, please wait. When I turn the power switch to on, I get nothing. Nothing at all. Oh, stop whinging. Let's start. Whatever works. Hello, everyone. Welcome to <laughs> Whatever Works, incorporating better before. I've had enough of Aidan whinging, so I'm going to carry on with the recording. Shall we go, Aidan? I was only trying to fix my Zoom because you told me to. <laughs> hello, everybody. I've been told off. This is Aidan in his corner saying hello. <laughs> We're back with another exciting, thrilling show. As usual, every fortnight, we bring you whatever works. I'm not excited or thrilled. Just wanted to put that down for the record. You should be, because (laughs) it looks like there might be an end to lockdown again until the next one comes around. (sighs) Let's not go there. Show 131. We're recording this on Friday the 19th of February. 2021, oh. and it's three o'clock, not one thirty. <laughs> well, we Whatever did it last wo- week. We did one thirty <laughs> at one thirty. That'll do. We did. Whatever works. Dot works is our website. It's very exciting, and um, actually, it's not. It's very straightforward. <laughs> But that's another story. And you can find out the uh, RSS link in there if you can't get the show in your podcatcher. And um, the only only last thing to mention, really, is the MeWe group. MeWe group has gone a bit quiet of late, so um, I'll tell you all off now. And um, let us know whatever works in your life, and we'll bring it to the show. However, having said that, we've got a packed show today with lots of stuff going on, haven't we, Aidan? We have indeed, sir. It will be very exciting. AidanBell.com is where you can find Aidan, TedSalmon.com for me, all the usual stuff. You know where to get hold of us, but we mostly hang out in the MeWe group. Let's get some feedback from the group, shall we? Let's do it, sir. Uh, right, this is a bit of feedback on your from me on your motion sensor LED, which you were oh, you're raving gonna, about. You're going to tell me off best, again, then, aren't you? Ted? <laughs> <laughs> the best lab, LED lab ever bought from anyone. We'll have to refund all the people that have bought these on the back of our recommendations. We can. Uh, we still can't get the one in the wardrobe to work properly. It's attached vertically to the door, and yes, I have tried it upside down as well. You open the door. It doesn't come on. You wave a hand in front of it. It doesn't come on. You walk across in front of it to block its path with the sensor. It doesn't come on. And I've tried... the. We bought a second one and we put it in the same position. We thought, well, maybe it's just a duff unit. Put it in the same position. Still nothing. And it just doesn't work in that situation. Because I've, I've taken both of them and put them in the bathroom... And during the night when it's dark, you walk in there and it comes on straight away. It's no problem at all. We've tested and tested and tested and they just don't work. And and I think that you're... Well, you said that they do work in that situation for you, didn't you? Well, obviously yours are less obstreperous than mine. I have three. One works perfectly normally as it should, 100%. The other two are stuck on. Uh, You could have on or off. You charge it up and it's on... The PIR doesn't work at all. When the battery eventually goes flat, which takes some days or even weeks to happen, charge it up again. So, yeah, I've got to, at least yours are working intermittently. Mine are simply stuck on. Yeah, right. OK, well, it, obviously these sensors are not that good and the, the, the whole thing's not very good. But mum has got round it with the wardrobe one because she says it doesn't matter because I open the wardrobe door and if I want the light on, I can just put my finger on the top oh, that's good. the button. that's good. So it stays on. And it, and it turns off like it should after um, 18 seconds or whatever it was. I tell you what I think, Ted. I think I stand by the fact that they're beautifully made and they're metal and they're sturdy and they're hefty and they're sound and they ought to cost more. Obviously, the reason they don't cost more is because the people that sold them know that they're screwed and they're going to stop working. And that's why they're at that cheap price. So, I mean, for instance, in your mother's case, if she's found a way of making it work, then I would still say she has a really nice light there at a cheap price. But for someone like myself or you that wants it to work with a PIR sensitivity as it should, then it's a load of crap. (laughs) All we want to do is to use it as it's supposed to be used but but actually you're absolutely right mum's very happy with it as it is so it's not lost and I've taken the other one and put it in the bathroom and again I'm completely happy with it so that it's all is not lost it's just I thought we ought to feed back on that yes indeed and I mean mine I mean for instance one of my 
broken in inverted commas ones, the ones that won't go off. All I do is I've still got the magnets on the ceiling, which, as you know, are fabulous for holding the thing. Yeah, so yeah. I just charge it up to full, bung it on the ceiling in the hallway, and that lasts about a week. <laughs> so all I have to do is do a weekly charge, and then I have a permanent light in the hallway. So, you know, one can make, these, one can make the best out of these things. Fiendish. 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 Thank you, sir. Ian Evans, he's fiendish too. He says... <laughs> He's going to tell you off now. I've had a telling off. It's your turn, uh, Ted. Right. Ian Evans, thanks for featuring my iPad stylus recommendation in this episode, Ted, says Ian. But I must protest. The stylus will do just about anything the Apple Pencil will do, apart from charging via the iPad. Also, it's not pressure sensitive and it charges via USB-C. So it's definitely not dumb. Ah, uh, right. Yeah. yeah, OK, sorry, Ian. Um, <laughs> One each. Fair point. <laughs> slap on the wrist. <laughs> I called it a dumb stylus, but it's not. It does um, all the other stuff that an Apple Pencil would do. Apologies. Let's move on. But you know what? You know what, Ted? If everything worked perfectly, wouldn't the world be a boring place? We need styluses <laughs> that we don't understand and lights that don't work properly to make the world a more exciting place. <laughs> Indeed we do. Ian Barton is not telling us off. Right. Oh, that's good. What's he telling us? He's, he's, he's telling us that he would like to recommend the Merino Nether Hose. This is kind of slightly tongue-in-cheek, I think. But I've been reading too many Elizabethan crime novels, he says, recently, where characters wear nether hose to cover their nether regions. <laughs> Last week, the temperature hardly rose above freezing. Well, it's all changed now. Oh, Mrs. Julia. It's bitter out. Bitter yeah, out. It's, all, it's, it's gone back to like summer here again. <laughs> I was enjoying it when it was cold last week. Anyway. I bet you were, yeah. Last week, the heart, the temperature hardly rose by freezing, and there was a strong easterly wind. Despite wearing warm trousers, my legs felt very cold. I've got a pair of these long johns I've had for several years. They're very thin, you, so you can easily wear them under your trousers. Also, I use them in my sleeping bag when it's snowy outside the tent. <laughs> I think that... Is that a joke? <laughs> he, he has got a house. I think he made. I was going to say, if I was in a tent and it was snowy out, I'd go indoors, but there you go. (laughs) (laughs) I think he probably means when he's away. Anyway, these definitely keep the chill off your legs and nether regions. Merino can be worn for several days without smelling, too. Um, I think mine cost around 30 quid from Alp Kit, who we'll link to in the show notes. Um, But I bought them when I bought them, but they're now 50 quid, he notices. It's a a bit of a hike, isn't it? How long has he had them? Uh, I can't remember now. Anyway, um, 50 quid. They are expensive, but they're worth the money, he says. Alp Kit has a three-year guarantee on their clothes. Um, so, yeah, there you go. They look very nice. Um, I'm not sure that I'd want to really wear stuff underneath my trousers, to be honest. And I don't get cold enough anyway. But um, he does say they're very thin, and um, that's OK to do that. So, yeah, we'll take his word for it. I've absolutely worn Nederhoes in the past, thermal undies uh, going on holiday to places cold or being on a film set early in the morning and needing to keep warm. They're fantastic. I can also speak highly of Merino. I don't know anything about these particular, this particular garment, but Merino as a product, as, as a sheep's wool from the Merino sheep from New Zealand... <coughs> Having lived in New Zealand for a couple of years, I've dis- uh, I love Merino. Anything Merino. Merino slippers, Merino sweaters, Merino Nederhosen. Perfect. Yeah, I can't speak highly enough of Merino. Gorgeous stuff. Excellent. Now it's time to fall asleep. <laughs> now, 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 Ted. Each to their own. <laughs> Steve Litchfield, and so I also believe Aidan Bell, on the... Uh, how do you pronounce this word? Seaside magnetic wooden chess board. Seaside. I suppose it's just a p- peculiar, ridiculous way of spelling seaside. Seaside <laughs> magnetic wooden chess board. C E A S Y D E. That's like P H U Q U E, isn't it? Right. Steve's <laughs> thoughts and reviews linked. He's um, he on this wonderful, I think you don't wooden chess board with magnetic pieces. Fiendish that Steve discovered and put into the MeWe group. Seems to be unavailable from Amazon now, but there's Steve's review on his own page that you can read, which is a marvellous review, which I did indeed read. Thank you for that, Steve. Yeah, I can hear Ted snoring in the background now. (laughs) It's one of those things. If you're not a chess player, if you're not interested in chess, why would you want one? Uh... But if you are and you do, it did look like a lovely, elegant, well-made, with thought, quality chess set. And yeah, well worth having. I... Fear that with my never diagnosed but very possibly present ADHD, I don't think I'd survive a chess game longer than about 20 minutes. So it might not be for me. But 
still something that appeals very much to me. I don't think to you, Ted. You're not a chess man, no? Uh, I, I was, but I... Uh... I know how to play chess, and I used to play it when I was a, a, a kid, um, and I had someone I used to play chess with at school, and I, I know how to play it, and it, it's just really, really boring. I, <laughs> I find it the most dull, boring game in the whole world. No, sorry, I'll take that back. There's Scrabble. I, I think I'll put Scrabble in front of chess as the most boring game in the now world. Now, you see, I, I have played and have enjoyed Scrabble. Right. But, you know, on the other side, I couldn't go near computer games, as I've said before. That's just not a thing for me. If you put me in front mm. of Angry Birds, I will be as bored as you would be in front of a chess set. So each to their own, definitely. Yes, absolutely. And I shouldn't complain, really, because when Steve bought this, he did buy it with my Amazon affiliate link, and I got a couple of quid for it. So thank you, Steve. And I'm glad. I'm really genuinely glad that you enjoy chess and stuff to do with chess. Um, but personally, I just find it really, really boring. Incidentally, um, if anyone wants to use our affiliate link, as we sometimes say at the top of the show, but we didn't today, you can do that. Just um, send me an Amazon gift token thingy um, and um, to my, you know, my, my known email address, and I turn that into cash, and we buy stuff to review on the show. So, so do do that, and I do appreciate um, Steve having used my link to do that. So. So don't bite the hand that feeds you, Mr. Salmon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And each each to their own. Absolutely. Can I also add the fiendish idea of the magnetic pieces, which I'm sure can't possibly be a new idea. Surely that's been around since God was a boy, but I've not come across it before. And the idea that if somebody accidentally bumps past the board on their way through the room, <laughs> they're not going to send all the pieces If flying. people are playing chess, no one's going to be animated enough to move and bump the board. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? It does make me wonder, though, seriously for a second, with your penchant for jigsaws, which perhaps Steve Litchfield isn't so keen on. Uh, now, uh, magnetic jigsaw pieces, that would also help, wouldn't it? That would stop yeah, disasters. It, would. Um, it certainly would, yes. We have had a few of those as well since we've been playing with Esther Salmon, my mother. And talking of whom, she has brought three items, a trio of top... T- three? Yes, of um, th- uh, things to the show. I'll just run through them quickly. Um, we ran through her Amazon order and just checked what she'd ordered recently, and we thought, right, we'll, we'll put those through All on right. the show. So the first one is a hand blender, Russell Hobbs Food Collection hand blender, two speeds for different food types, stainless steel blades, attachable uh, plastic blending leg for easy cleaning not so comfy to hold as the old one says mum the button needs pushing in harder but that may be due to her arthritic hands that are not so good as they used to be nice that it fitted mm-hmm. the same wall bracket as the old one say pricking about with drilling does a good blending job £11.69 the second one is the Taylor's Eyewitness Syracuse Scalloped uh, whatever it is that's the Syracuse. one what's it, what's Syracuse <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. Oh, OK. I thought you knew what it meant. OK. Um, a bread knife. Eight-inch cutting blade, razor sharp, fine blade, soft, soft textured grey handle, 25-year guarantee. Um, fine uh, ground hollow edge, £13.97. And Mum says that she's still waiting for her, her £100 knife gift from Chris Kelly. <laughs> and Talking of Chris Kelly, he would have told us that Syracuse is a city in New York. Ah, God bless Google. No, uh, no, uh, no doubt at all. Right, and the third one is the wall, as in um, beard trimmer, James Martin electric knife, removable standard and coarse blades, carving and cutting frozen food, meat, vegetables, blah blah blah. She says it's nice to hold, easy to use. And we think it was about 20 quid, but actually, sadly, it's out of stock now and we can't find a price. Um, but, uh, yeah, th- so so a trio of items there. I suppose you've got one of each of those. It just so happened that at this time she needed to replace them. Do you know, I haven't. And I think the first thing I want to say, without meaning to sound in any way patronising, is your mother cooks. I don't cook. I'm a ding-ding man. I buy ready meals and put them in the microwave, so I have no yeah. need of a hand blender, bread knife, you or make electric bread. knife. So I make bread, um, but even when I... Well, I made bread during the when, when all the world did during lockdown, um, but I used a hand cut knife to cut that, and I was very happy doing so. We do actually have one of the three. We have um, uh, an electric knife, which is a Kenwood one that I bought... Oh, many years ago and still works very, very well once a week and once a week only I cut the joint with it. And that's the only use it ever gets. But it's been going strong for a long, long time. 
So, yeah, they all sound great. I just wish I had an ability to and a desire to cook, which I sadly don't. Get yourself in there and learn. Duly noted Chef Salmon. Yeah, thank you, Esther, anyway. Mum. I should say mum. <laughs> Shouldn't call her Esther, I suppose. Um, well, there's form- formality. Mrs. Mrs. Salmon. Salmon. Thank you so much, Mrs. Salmon. Right, now, this week... That sounds like a book or a song. Thank you so much, Mrs. Salmon, for the da 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 da. Uh, yes, sorry, move the on. Salmon of knowledge. <laughs> Let, now, the, um, the the. Oh, thank you for the salmon, Mrs. Salmon. That could be Noel Coward, couldn't it? Thank you. Yes. Shut up. Moving on. <laughs> right now, this last week I saw some um, posts about Lego. Someone posted a thing about this car they fancied, and it was a Lego Porsche or something. Um, and it started me thinking about Lego, and I thought, um, how how do these things work? Um, the w- the question I had mainly was that when we were when we were kids, we we had a box of Lego, and you stuck your bricks in it and if you were lucky you found a wheel or two but basically you just created something out of your imagination and you you just put the bricks together to make something these days looking through amazon it seems to me as though you ha- you you get these kits that are made specifically to make in this example a porsche so i was thinking to myself well, if you have a kit that is specifically for a Porsche, then those bits are not going to be any good for the next project you want to do, make something else like we did when we were kids. And sure enough, that seems to be um, partially true. Uh, we'll come to some comments in the middle uh, in, a, in a minute. So essentially, these Lego kits become more like an Airfix model, for example, or a 3D jigsaw. That they're, they're only good, really, to a large degree, to, to for that for doing that one thing. Right. So then I put the thoughts out to the people who obviously do use Lego, and their kids do or they do. Is it an adult pastime now, or is it still a children's thing? I didn't know. I've not used Lego for like 50 years plus. So what did they start saying, uh, Aidan? Well, initially I was like you, Ted. My reaction is the same, that I I only remember Lego. And to be honest, my strongest memory of Lego is standing on it as a child. Oh. <laughs> That's incredibly painful if you walk <laughs> through your bedroom in bare feet and stand on an errant piece of Lego. Yeah. But... um. For two or three years recently when I've been doing my my job working, as doing stints as Santa and talking to kids and what do you want for Christmas, I was very pleased that a lot of children were still asking for Lego, but baffled that they didn't just ask generically for Lego, exactly as you were saying. They were asking for a Lego ice cream truck or a Lego Disney castle or Lego Harry Potter. So that was new to right. me as well. So that when you started this conversation, the whole idea of no longer just a box of Le- of lego random pieces and now everything has to be specific was new was also new to me john love says i got back into lego myself in the last few years i've bought kits and built that specific model i've stuck to technic with generally 2 to 1000 2 to 6000 pieces that take quite a few hours to build i'll say and i've never heard of technic before either technic is a theme range lego offer says john oh thank you for example they offer a city range ninjago whatever that is harry potter explorer star wars etc technic tends to be one of the more expensive and complicated sets i find it more engaging and appealing as an adult More kits are designed to build one or two different... Most kits are designed to build one or two different models. In theory, you could create more, but some parts are quite specific. If you had multiple kits, you Uh could combine. Personally, I like to build as per instructions and leave constructed. Now, there you are. There's the thing. You see, my the point I made in the MeWe discussion is that it seems a great shame to me that children are no longer being encouraged to use their imagination. It's just painting by numbers. Put these pieces together and you'll have Harry Potter's wizard hat. At. But at least, as John says, perhaps you can then take the wizard hat apart and try to build yeah, something yeah. else with you it. you could do that, I suppose. Frank Neidhart says, I guess nowadays you usually buy sets of something, um, as John says. You can also buy a box of bricks um, or individual bricks if you prefer to do it that way. And yes, some of the sets are for adults and they can be expensive. That said, my now eight-year-old daughter has a couple of sets and even Lego Duplo. Oh, yeah, I remember Duplo. They're the big bricks, aren't they? Um, and she mixes oh, them to create yes. her own world. So um, Frank's daughter, obviously, is using them creatively. 
of which I wholeheartedly improve. Jonathan Southerly mm. says, as I entered my mid-twenties, I discovered Star Wars Lego and the increased prices for such things and bought many models and kits. Now having kids, they have a mixture of smaller models and mixed yeah. Lego. Bravo, Jonathan. I personally like them exploring and being creative, but there are merits to being had for following instructions and completing something. Mm-hmm. Yes, point taken. It's incredibly long-lasting and something that all generations oh, can right. relate to. And Ian Bundy uses Lego at work um, for facilitation, he says, using a method called Lego Serious Play. Um, it's uh, used to solve problems and used by many companies globally. It's even used by NASA after the space shuttle disaster to build new health and safety practices. And he supplied in the MeWe group a picture of a table that's been set up with um, just just that, really. And lots of <laughs> le- bits of Lego and using... Um, uh, uh, um, items across the, the table to demonstrate health and safety issues and yeah yeah it's a, a learning tool as well thank you Ian. Yeah so I think it's neither one nor the other it's neither the original box of bricks nor a complete you must build this I think you know we found, a, we found quite a nice middle ground here by the looks of things. Ed Howes I've given both my boys the same start as me plenty of mixed bricks and then whatever sets they're most interested in they build around the themes they like that way. Very tempted by some of the huge Technic sets as an adult though. I saw a Land Rover Defender last <laughs> night I'd love to sit that on my desk yeah. <laughs> Very interesting. As you say, there's a mixture going on there. And it, it, it did give me an insight. This. Thank you, folks, for responding to that. Um, I, I, I can see that these kits can be very expensive, but you can also get cheaper ones like 15 to 20 quid. You can buy some of them and some of them are like, uh, you know, 100 quid. I, I even, yes, I even yes. saw bizarrely this Friends for people that remember the, the 1990s comedy Friends. There's a, yes. a Friends Central Perk Cafe set, <laughs> 65 quid. Um, 65. And I mean, you can get pretty much whatever you want, really, in a kit. Um, and, and yes, you can reuse some of the bricks, as some people said above. Um, but, um, you know, I, I, I still say there's a place for just buying a big box of them and letting kids um, learn from there. But I, I think as an adult, um, I can understand the Land Rover that Ed's talking about. You say, I really like Land Rovers, for example, and I want to make a Land Rover and not to keep breaking it up and put it, up, taking it apart, but the, the enjoyment of making it and follow the instructions and doing it and then putting it on the shelf and being able to look at it. Look at it. So I can see both sides of that. I'm with you there, Ted. And also, I think it's quite encouraging reading through the, the wonderful comments. Thank you all for those that people are doing both. As you say, they are doing a box of bricks and or uh, a ready made, a ready constructed, ready conceived model. But the kids can then decide to 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 adapt them the way they want to. <laughs> I have one more word. Meccano. <laughs> Oh, that's the next one, Meccano. <laughs> That'll be next. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, same, probably the same thing applies, but we could certainly look into that one. Um, and I haven't played with Meccano for 50 years either. Um, so, But I'm sure that they, they haven't gone away. They're out there doing their thing. Hurts when you stand on it too. <laughs> kids top tips, kids top tips, kids top tips. Right, tell someone where you're going and be prepared. Actually, I'm going to sit here and do this podcast with Ted. <laughs> Right, especially I, I have no idea what you're talking about, but I I've got this story about a lady from a, a local village who lost her way, and she was she 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 knows this um, area. She's been living here for, for decades, and she knows the local area very well. But she decided to go for a walk one day in January. She took her no coat, no hat, no gloves, nothing. Um, it was an incredibly mild January d- day. She strolled along and then suddenly realised she'd lost her way. It was getting dark. Um, She happened upon a a house, um, which she went to for help, but not before the local police got involved and called, uh, because her husband called, um, concerned about her. Yeah. And apparently five pe- five, five police cars have been sent out, <laughs> as well as a helicopter and a drone to look for this this lady. Anyway, the point was that, um, and she felt very, very embarrassed about it afterwards. She did. Yes. She acknowledged that she may be getting older, and that's one of the reasons contributing to the fact that she lost her way, that she got confused or whatever. But the point is, when you're going somewhere, just my top tip is tell someone where you're going and know when you're going to be expected back. Or better still, take a phone with you, which has got Google Maps uh, tracking on it, and let someone track you. Um, so, yeah. 
it was it was quite nice to know that others were looking out for her though and that um at a time of crisis you know people do mobilize support and we live in an age now where you can you know, drones you know a missing person is being looked for by looked looked for by a drone it's a, by a, a drone. very Goodness, impressive yes. yeah it's good stuff really but it is a good point to make i mean obviously we all know if you're going to climb a mountain or go and visit someone you've discovered on the internet then of course you tell somebody first but as you say I mean you could go around the corner to post a letter and and twist your ankle and lie in the road and die of cold exactly so as you say yeah if if you're able to within reason then even if it's something you think what earth is going to happen to me of course I'll be fine you can never second guess everything that may or may not happen I have this with my mother we'll go out and I'll say did you bring your phone we'll go out in the days where we used to go out did you bring your phone oh no I didn't need to bring my phone you've got yours yeah. And I say, yeah, what happens if I crash the car, if I have a heart attack, if my ba- phone battery dies? Yeah. You know, you, you just you, you can't second guess everything. Indeed. Absolutely right. Anyway, there's my Ted's top tips for today. <laughs> now, we have <laughs> Try got... saying that when you've had a couple. <laughs> we've, got, uh, we've got a new section. And this is in a section which has been brought about by an idea by Ian Watson, who says... The, you remember the Amazon Associates link that I just spoke about? Um, well, he said it would be quite a nice idea to pick something from that list that someone has bought using the Associate link. And I also thought that that might be quite good fun as well. So just to explain, when someone buys a um, an item with my Associate link, link which is tinyurl.com forward slash Amazon Ted UK, um, I get a list of the items that have been bought. I don't know who's bought what, but I do get a list of the things that have been bought using the scheme. And Ian's quite right. It'd be quite interesting to look through those and, and have maybe um, pick out one or two of the funny ones and um, to see what's been bought. And we thought we call this section, I wonder who bought it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I've you, and you know where my brain is going. I'm thinking, hmm, I could buy a gun or a vibrator or, or a tub of Vaseline, and then just wait to see what happens. Right. All okay. right. Well, what, what's the first item? So then, the Tate? first time we're running this is um, someone has bought this pair of cups. They're called the Y O L stacking mugs Aztec giraffe, um, and the. The thing is about these two mugs, they just look really interesting. They're, they're basically mugs. There's nothing... They're, they're bone china mugs, which are very nice mugs, and the pair of them cost £8.99. But the, the the only thing about them that's significant, really, is that they, they stack together, so you can pile them one on top of the other. And when you do, the pictures on the two mugs um, match up and make a bigger picture. And it just looks like really good fun. And the one that um, this person has bought, whoever it is, has bought the giraffe one. But there are other ones as well in the, in this scheme. Um, I don't think that you can, it works with more than two, um, but I could be... Um, I, I'm not absolutely sure of that. It looks like most of them are two. There's an elephant one there on the Amazon page as well, which looks really, really nice. And, um, of course, when you're stacking them on your shelf or putting them in the cupboard, you can open your cupboard and it just it's just a bit of fun. I really like those. These are great fun. I like this very much. There's two of us, then. Somebody wanted one of those, <laughs> I'm calling it. <laughs> Somebody wanted one of those, here. Yeah. <laughs> That's lovely. Yeah. And it reminds me of my favourite Frankie Howard joke. Do you know why giraffes have such long necks? No. Because their heads are so far away from their bodies. <laughs> <laughs> Not enough, enough. Right, so okay. yes, um, watch out for this section. You don't need to do anything. Just keep using the associate link, please. And um, and I'll I'll try and um, pick something else, else out I've, each show. I've just that got looks you funny. out. Talk about fiendish, Ted Salmon. This is just to get people to give you money. Very good. I'm on to you, sir. I'm on to you. Yeah. Do you remember in the days when we used to go out and there used to be places called banks and you used to go in and pay your checks in and do your business, um, your banking business, by the way. Um, and they had pens. They had this lovely thing that you'd find in all banks. Yeah, <laughs> they, they pick it up at the back last. Um, they, 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 it's a pen. It's a sort of black 
solid, heavy thing with a hole in it and a pen on a chain, and you pop the pen into this hole, and the idea is nobody can nick the pen because it's chained to the bank. I was in charge of those. When I, when I worked for Barclays Bank in my first job when I left school, I, I was in charge of those pens, and I had to make sure that they all had their refills in and that they hadn't been ripped off by the customers. Hey, oh, well, I bought one. <laughs> I bought one for four pounds and seven pence. I had an ulterior motive. I didn't actually want a bank chain pen. What's it called? Do you look after them? What are they called? Do they have a generic name or are they just pens with chains on? That's the one, yeah. OK, I, bought, I, I didn't want a pen with a chain on. What I wanted was the hole because I was trying out... Oh, no, it's um, a reception pen. That's it. A reception pen. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I was trying out a, a graphics tablet for my uh, on the computer at, uh, at my desk and there was nowhere to keep the pen. And I looked on Amazon and I've put a link actually in our recording notes. There is a gorgeous looking pen holder that Amazon make, which is basically just a, a, a little block of metal aluminium with a hole in it but it's 14 quid and I thought well that's pushing it just to stand a pen up because I don't want it to lie on the desk so I bought this thing for four pounds and seven pence instead because I thought well it's got a hole in it and it's there for holding a pen it should be perfect sadly it's not perfect because it turned out that the hole wasn't quite large enough or deep enough to hold the graphics tablets pen so it was no use so i very honestly uh filled in the i, I returned it to amazon or i wanted to return it to amazon and i filled out the form and i very with great honesty i said this is not suitable for the intended purpose uh, therefore i would like to return it and i got the message back saying we will refund you for this purchase you don't have to return it <laughs> Not again. So I've got a free pen that I don't want. Yeah. <laughs> Which means I can review the reception pen that I actually didn't want in the first place. It's not bad. I would describe it as halfway between a toy version and the real thing. It's obviously not as heavy as the ones that you will remember, Ted. Right. However, on the back, it's got an enormous, the size of the base, uh, peel-off sticker. So I haven't tried it because I don't want it to stick to anything. But if you wanted to, you could peel this off and stick it down and it would probably take a, an elephant or two to move it. So I imagine you could really firmly stick it down if you wanted to. The pen is fairly cheap plastic. The metal of the chain is very cheap metal, but it works. The pen stands in the hole. It does have a habit of falling out now and again. I think the hole isn't quite the right size for the pen, but it does what it says on the tin and the pen writes. <laughs> you even get a... I think it was two or three. Let me have a look. I've got it here. Two. Two spare, uh, whatever you call them, inks, internal. You know, the little, the long plastic sheath with the ink in it that you put inside the pen. I've got two more of those. Um, it's a perfectly decent working pen. And if you want one for your desk, then they're £4.07 from Amazon. No, they've gone down. Amazon, the, £3.46. Has it gone down? Yeah, £3.46. Well, well, well. And if you tell Amazon that you don't want it, they'll refund you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. It's interesting to be reviewing something that I neither wanted nor intend to keep, but it's here on my desk and I thought I'd have to let the good folk know that it's actually all right. It's all right. It's halfway between the real thing and a toy version thereof. Very good. And it's reduced in price and it's definitely cheap as chips. I quite like the look of that aluminium block, though. That's quite interesting. The it's aluminium a, block a looks gorgeous. 14 quid. Yeah, because it's a bit of a, a mick take, really, isn't it? Uh, but it looks lovely. It looks it's a sort lovely. of brushed aluminium, yeah. a square, almost into a square block of aluminium. You can get it in silver or bronze or dark silver or gold. Uh, and it's got, as I said, it's got a hole in it. It's, it's, there's no there's no cunning technology no, involved. It's got no. a hole in it. And you drop the pen in the hole yeah. and there you are. Voila. But yeah, yeah, as I say, even, even spendthrift Mr. Bell decided 14 quid was a bit steep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so did they let you keep it? Oh, no, that one I never bought. I didn't buy that at all. Oh, I just found this it. one. Oh, no, no, I, f I saw this one and, and, and luckily saw sense and didn't okay, buy it. Okay. So instead, I bought okay. and then got refunded for the, the funny old bank pen. I'll try and listen to you next time. <laughs> yeah, it, it, do, do it. Well, you tell us, <laughs> tell us yours and I won't listen. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to throw into Cheapest Chips um, the works. Do you remember those shops? That, if you went oh, very to much, a, a, yes. a, a mall, a mall as the Americans, a mall a mall, as the Americans call yeah. them, a shopping centre place. Um, there was these shops called The Works. And when you went into these shops, they, they, they tended to be tables piled high of books that were like really, really cheap and end of line. And it was all very kind of basic and little. It's a sort of book stationery equivalent of a pound shop, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. And 
the, now I don't know if the workshops are still a thing, but they do have an online presence. And we went. You remember that we spoke about playing jigsaws? Uh, oh yes, using you jigsaws. Did. <laughs> well, um, you know, Steve can switch off now. Um, we we were talk, we were getting into these jigsaws, and we went to Amazon, and the prices of these jigsaws on Amazon are really quite stupid, as quite often they are with pricing on Amazon. So we started to look around to try and find cheaper ones, and we ended up at the works. The works co.uk um and there's a range of them there which start at five quid for 500 piece jigsaws and they're really very good if you buy six of them you get free postage and packing um and they arrive with hermes which is really they were very efficient 500 pieces six pieces each five quid each so you spend 30 quid and you get six jigsaws um they're okay they're not the best in the world um but they're all right and um we've really enjoyed doing them um so yeah absolutely the one in question that i i put in the the show notes as an example um was five pounds um on the the works and 14.99 at amazon and some of them are much more expensive than that on amazon as well it's just one of those things that they just don't seem to do very well isn't it I'm very impressed. I, I'm not a jigsaw as I think I said in the last show, but, mm. I mean, five quid? Exactly. And as, as you say, you, you, you've done us the favour of taking the punt and buying one and can confirm that it's worthwhile. That's a fantastic price. It is. Very good. I mean, they're not all five quid. You, they, they go up from there. If you visit the website, they, they're they five, six, seven, eight, and nine, what ten. what are the pounds. pieces like? I mean, are they... Th- are they cl- more? Are they closer to paper than card, or are they decent pieces no, of card? No, they're, they're all right. Yeah, they're, they're absolutely fine. They're, they're not. You know, they're, they're far from bits of plywood, but you know, they're, they're, they're certainly not paper. Oh, they're not Steve Litchfield magnetized pieces. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they're, they're seriously though. They're, 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 they're far from rubbish, and they're far from premium. But they're in the middle there somewhere, and they're really good value. And I think exactly like my pen, exactly like my pen, exactly. So there you are then, cheapest chips. I want one. I want one. I want one. I want one of those. I can't speak much about these because I only discovered them literally minutes ago before the show. I happened to stumble on this online and thought, wow. It's another party I could very well be late to. You're going to tell me you've discussed these on the show before and I'll believe you. But I personally have never before come across adjustable glasses, which are (laughs) essentially glasses with a tiny little wheel on either. I'm not sure if it's both sides or just one side. And you turn this wheel and it's just like focusing a projector. You look at something, you turn the wheel and it goes in and out of focus. Now, are you laughing because I should have heard of these before or are you laughing because you haven't either? I'm laughing because I can imagine people playing chess with these on. (laughs) (laughs) But do carry on. (laughs) Um... So, you're, 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 you know, I, I wondered whether I was going to end up with egg on my face because you say, oh, goodness, Aidan, everybody no. knows these. I've had six pairs before. But if not, this does look like a possibly fiendish idea. Now, in my hurry before recording, um, mea culpa, hands in the air, I haven't had a chance to look at them properly. I've found two pairs. One is iJusters, a website selling them specific, and they're about 70 quid a pair. And I would likely trust those more than the pair I found on Amazon uh, at, I think, eighteen ninety nine. So I... I don't know if, you know, where eyesight and health is concerned, I'd probably prefer to spend 70 quid than 19. But, you know, that needs further research. But it looks I'm particularly keen because even though I do already own reading glasses and computer glasses at two separate prescriptions, because of the way that I work and because I've got 480 monitors in my studio, the different monitors are at slightly different uh, distances from when I'm sat at the computer and then I want to turn and look at my mixing desk or then I want to read or look at or I've got my loop deck control which is slightly to the left and a slightly further great distance away I think a pair of these might be just what the doctor ordered or maybe didn't order maybe what the doctor recommended against I don't know but I'm intrigued and I would be very keen to know whether anyone <coughs> Chris Kelly knows about these <laughs> already and can tell us anything because they do look fiendish do they not mr salmon 
they uh, they look as though they're um, readers, and so prescription is probably not in even from eye justers. It, there's no mention of prescription. So... Oh no, I found it. I found it. It's zero point five to four. Yeah. So 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 they're basically magnifying glasses, they're re- aren't they? Yeah. They're readers. Yeah, but that yeah. would that would suit me for both my computer and okay. reading distances. Okay. Well, good for you. Yeah. Um, tis a good idea. They. I have to say that all joking aside, they look. Nerdish. They look. You, oh, you wouldn't want to be seen in them. No, no. <laughs> no. You keep them keep them behind closed doors. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I had a, if I ever have another client come into my studio, I don't want to be wearing them when they come in. Um, there is a slight concern, which is I have an anisomtropia. <laughs> really. Which I learned today is a posh word for astigmatism. Right. Which basically oh. means that each of my eyes has a slightly different prescription. Yes. So for that reason, I would certainly want to be able to adjust each eye differently. I mean, this gets more complicated by yeah, the moment, yeah, yeah. doesn't it? But who knows? Maybe I should spend the 18 quid and have a play. And then if they're really good, I'll just send them back to Amazon and buy a 70 quid pair from the proper place. I don't know. More research is required. I have, an, I have astigmatisms in both eyes. And it is the misshaping of the cornea. Um, I'm, I know all about that from my from from the age of about ten onwards. I had this, right. and um, it is difficult to then get stuff without prescriptions. But you can live without correcting the astigmatism, and just have your short or long sighted. Yes, you can. Corrected. And as yeah. we've been speaking, I have noticed that you can indeed adjust each side separately. So, in fact, one could cope with astigmatism by just adjusting each lens differently. What yes, fun! Indeed. Absolutely. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Right, there you go then. Eye justers. Or the cheap equivalent on Amazon. Right, bowlers over. The Bolus Road Chief Terra Firma, which is a caravan. Oh. And, you know, I'm, I'm nuts about caravans, aren't I? I just like are, the sir. open road and, yes. the, you know, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, this looks just like a really, really luxurious caravan. It looks very American in the style of the way they, what was it, what was it they call them? The silver bullet. It does um, look like a bullet. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, and, and inside, it just looks gorgeous. It looks like the inside of a railway carriage or the inside of an aircraft. Um, a a private airplane or something and it just looks like it's beautifully finished really well well done not too big to drag around with a car not too heavy Um, at the end of it where it turns where it goes into a kind of um, aero aero, aerodynamic um, point is the bedroom where there's either two singles or one double bed at the end Um, and it's got a shower and a bathroom and and a a toilet and blah blah yeah the usual things you'd expect the caravan to have but it's just the design it just looks gorgeous um and the only concern i would have is that it probably for someone of my size might be on the small side in in terms of showering in it um because the emphasis has been very clearly on luxurious design and and gorgeous interior fittings and 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 fixtures and the way it's been just laid out that that they've probably skimped on the size of the facilities a bit but for for anyone normal size this would just be delightful and i could just see myself doing it it looks lovely well i must say the 265 thousand dollar price tag puts my glasses (laughs) in in their place doesn't it (laughs) do you know i didn't even look at the price Oh, oh money, who needs money no to. object. Do you know, it, 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 I love it. It looks to me, it's an absolute cross between retro and futuristic, isn't it? Yes. It's right. really gorgeous. Personally, if I was seriously going to own anything like this, I'm always, I, I'm much more a sort of camper van man than I am a caravan man. I prefer right. to have the engine built in. But it, that said, this is gorgeous. And wouldn't it be wonderful to drive into a beautiful wood, as pictured, in fact, on, on the website, yeah. and park up and, and just camp out in it? Gorgeous. Yeah, absolutely would. Um, this one, particular one, sleeps four, but there are, there are other ones with different um, berths in them as well. It just, it just, it's the... Four? It's the fi- four? It's just me and myself. Yeah. <laughs> and possibly that lovely dog. I don't know whether the dog <laughs> comes with it, but... <laughs> Yeah, um, but but it's just it, it, it's all it's just it, it, this is all about design and yes, two hundred sixty five thousand dollars as you say is the starting price. So who knows what they go up to? Anyway, link in the show notes if you'd like to have a look at that. And if you've got plenty of money, then please do buy me one. I shall indeed, Ted, on your Amazon affiliate link. <laughs> Still using 
Okay, I'm still using the Dimplex flat fan heater that I bought um, probably 10 plus years ago. And I did review on the show, might have been before you joined in, uh, Aidan, um, but it, uh, probably 2016 or 17. This little fan heater is still going. It's not the cheapest fan heater in the world, but maybe that is a mark for its longevity and that the yeah. fact that it's still going all this time later. Yeah, get it's what about you pay for. for Indeed, yeah. You you pay 40 quid for this one. And yes, you can buy uh, fan heaters for a tenner on Amazon, but this is still going. It still works as well the, the, today as it did the day it was bought. I have the two kilowatt version, but um, Amazon at the moment only seem to be showing the three kilowatt version. But that's OK. You can just turn it down. Uh, you, well, if you find the two kilowatt version, it might be a bit cheaper, I suppose. Anyway, there's a thermostatic control if you want to uh, make use of that. Different heat settings. Is it the cool blow on it? Um, there's a cutout if it gets too hot. If you drop your, um, if you drop your jumper on it or whatever, um, <laughs> and it's it's great for short bursts of direct heat. This is what I use it for. It's, it tends to be under my feet in the in the static home, and instead of putting the central heating on, I just put this thing on, blast it on my feet for ten minutes, and uh, you know a small room, particularly if you shut the door in a small room, you can get it toasty and warm with one of these with just like ten minutes worth of electricity, and it's just the same as kind of putting the kettle on for a while in terms of <laughs> using using electricity. Dimplex used to be a good name. I'm not sure if they are still now. It might be a badge Chinese thing for all I know. Could be wrong. And Anyway, point is, I'm still using this 10 to 15 years later, and I personally would recommend 40 quid over a cheapo, crapo tenor one, which has got some Chinese brand name who probably hasn't kite marked it or done anything with it. Um, and this Dimplex one is still going. Uh, fully concur Full concurrence, Mr. Salmon. We've always had uh, a couple of heaters... Of, of this ilk in the house for years since as long back far back as I can remember and they are the most fantastic useful things to have in case there's a power cut and you need to heat a room in a hurry or for any other reason if you're drying wallpaper in the bathroom or whatever it is they are beautiful I, I've actually got one I'm looking at at the moment in my studio because the heating in here is a bit is a bit naff and during the cold spell I've been using this one which is a crown version very right. similar to yours, okay. and I've been using it just recently during the cold spell just to give a bit of a kick to the heating in the studio. And, yeah, I absolutely concur with you, Ted. Fabulous product. Every household should have one. Including my household when I've got my gout pain and I want to toast my feet. <laughs> well, that's the point, Ted. You can toast anything with these. And talking of feet... Cunning, cunning link. Talking of feet, <laughs> my feet are still benefiting from the Osim foot and calf massager. What I brought on to show number 84 on the 15th of June 2019. I was going to say last year, but it's all moving too fast. 2019, I brought this on. Um, you may remember me telling the tale then of how my mother and I were at Brent Cross and we found a Eustiletto foot and calf massager being demonstrated, which yeah. is basically this dirty great thing that you stick both feet in and not, you know, it's a bit like a horror film because you have no idea what's down there. And then rollers start moving back and forth on your feet and air cushions blow up and it deflate and pre put pressure on your feet. And it gives you a really wonderful foot massage. Well, now, this thing at the time cost something like, I think it was not men, not much short of 500 quid. Yeah, it's 488 quid for a second-hand one at the moment. They seem to have superseded it with something or else gone bankrupt, but whatever. The one that I tried back then is still 500 quid, um, which was way too much even to think about spending. So I went home and got onto eBay and found an older version, which I think was 150 quid, which I snapped up. And um, we, my mother and I both use it uh, two or three times a week each, I would imagine. It's perfect when you're just sat, sat vegging in front of telly. You just stick your feet in this and, and, and just, you know, disappear and watch the telly and get a foot massage at the same time. It's not terribly good anymore. I mean, this one was the older version to start with and it must now be, wow. 10, 15 years old. Who knows when this thing came out? Um, so it would be lovely to be able to afford to upgrade it with a much better one. But it's still wonderful. As I say, you bung your feet in it and you get pampered while you're watching the telly. What could be better? 
Lovely. Um, mind you, scrolling down their web page, I, I still prefer the chairs. The U Divine V massage. Oh chair. yeah, they make. I mean, they oh, they, yeah. they do make a, a number. There's there's one. There's a thing that seems to be quite common with a lot of companies, which is more of a sort of open plan massager, where you can actually see what's going on with your feet and your calves. Whereas <gasps> this one that we've got. Oh dear. Uh, what have you just discovered? There's this, this one of these chairs is refurbished, mind you. It's not even new, and it's three thousand quid nearly. Oh, these things cost a fortune, Ted. This is why I ended up paying one hundred and fifty on eBay for a half naff one, yeah. because you know, oh, new ones four grand. You'd have to be either very stupid or very rich or both <laughs> to pay that kind of money for a foot massage. They do look lovely, though. You're absolutely right. Yeah, there's some phone numbers in the West End I could phone to get a foot massage much cheaper than that if I wanted yeah, to. Yeah, enough, <laughs> enough. Uh, let's move on to Mike Robbins. A quick one on the OnePlus X, which is a mobile phone. We don't want to get too techy, but um, in December 2015, he says, I purchased a OnePlus X mobile phone for my wife. This last December, I finally had to reset it to clear it up and sort it out. I re- reloaded my wife's Google account, um, and it's now back in use, so so, um, he says it qualifies as still using. Um, I'd, I'd happily, I would happily get her a more up-to-date phone, but she still loves this form factor and really likes the phone. Um, there's a, wow. lack, a distinct lack of security updates and a small battery, but apart from that, yes. So a 2015 phone um, still being usable today is great. Well done, Mike. I mean, as purely a listener to your fabulous PSC podcast, I would offer that six years for a mobile phone is extraordinary. I mean, you, you guys talk about six months being a long time to keep a phone. <laughs> six yeah. years? That sounds think, phenomenal. We are kind of niche, uh, a niche market, though, I think, in PSC. Six months is a bit extreme. But certainly, um, if you want a phone to last that long, you would be looking at buying an iPhone. Although... Um, um, because Apple do that really, really well. But uh, Samsung are trying to, to catch up with that, and, and Google Pixels are doing a bit better. Let's not get techy and go down the PSC route, eh? <laughs> OK. In which case, I really must get round to writing a jingle for the next section, mustn't I? You must. You're on borrowed time. <laughs> OK, it's the review section, and um, reviews! There we are. <laughs> Now, this is interesting because this is not dissimilar to the pen what I just reviewed in that it's neither good quality nor poor quality. But in the case of what I'm reviewing, it actually doesn't matter as much as it might with the pen. Let me explain. Can you write with it? No, you cannot write with it. Okay. But you can see to write with your pen if you want to. (laughs) It's a ceiling light. I've I've dropped the hint a few times in, in recent episodes that I've been redecorating my bathroom, which is now finished. I'm very happy with it. Thank you for asking. Um... And I, but I wasn't happy with the lighting. Uh, and that's another story in itself, because it used to be a lit by a good old fashioned 150 watt bayonet fit light bulb. And I made the mistake of deciding to move with the times and put in LED lights instead. And I deeply regret it. However, having gone down that path, I decided I needed a better light than what I was what I'd ended up with. And I bought from Amazon a 24 watt LED ceiling light for eighteen pounds ninety nine. It's basically a round light. It's uh, it, it's a ceiling light. It's a it's a round flat ceiling light. sits in the middle of the room on the ceiling, of course. Uh, it's full of LEDs. I mean, when inside it, it's got a, a, a circuit, a round circular set of LED lights. I haven't counted them. There must be maybe twenty, thirty, even forty lights in a in a circle circular pattern but when it comes on you just see one singular light source and it's very good it's a nice bright clean 60 uh, 64k um, source of light no flicker very pleasant very good Um, the reason it's cheap and cheerful is because it is Uh, it's made of very cheap metal Really nasty, cheap, easy to bend. I mean, I had to drill holes in it and I barely had to touch the drill on it and they went through. Um, oh and the plastic of the of the actual part that you see on the ceiling is also very cheap and cheerful. But it doesn't matter because once you've put this thing up and mounted it, you're never going to touch it. You're never going to have to handle it or do anything with it. And it looks very smart, looks very professional smart. So it really doesn't matter that it's cheap and cheerful. Um and it works. And, and really, there's not a lot to say about it. It went up fine. It works fine. Now, I'm going to really have to tread carefully here because the last LED light I raved about on the show, <laughs> I had to eat my hat afterwards. But for now, for the time being, of course, it's, tw- it's 240 volt powered with a switch. It comes on when you turn the switch on. It goes off when you turn the switch off. Now, one thing it does do, which I'm sure is 
intentional but wasn't written down anywhere in any of any of the literature is that it has a has a constant glow even when it's switched off i presume there's a dirty great fat capacitor in there controlling the leds which means that there's still some residual power so you get a very faint glow which i like very much because what that effectively does is it gives you a a, a constant night light in the bathroom even when the light's not switched on um now if you don't want that then you're going to be annoyed by it but otherwise for me personally i'm very happy with that uh and the side benefit which I must quote from because it was glorious, was these instructions that came with it. I'm frantically looking for my reading glasses because talking about different prescriptions, I've now got to take off my computer glasses and put on my reading glasses (laughs) for anyone who didn't see the MeWe post. The instructions for this light, I don't know if you saw this, Ted, when I posted it on MeWe. Uh, It says, um, only three steps to install. Steps one to four. (laughs) (laughs) And the best bit of all is step number three. Screw the screw clockwise into the plastic expansion lock the lamp. Let the ceiling light fixture onto the wall. Test if the lighting worked properly before screw up. (laughs) (laughs) So you get a giggle with the instructions as well. But it's, it's a competent, functional LED ceiling light, less than 20 quid. What's not to love? Very good. And 30,000 hours before you got to... Yeah, I, I read that. I don't know how many, how many years that would be. That's a long time. <laughs> I, I'm not sure if I'd want it on all the time, though. But, uh, maybe a situation where it wouldn't matter but in, in a bathroom. But it would certainly matter in a bedroom, probably, to some Oh, people. it would matter in a bedroom. So, but it's very dim. I mean, it's very dim. It's just mm-hmm. that very slight glow by which you can just about see in the room. It's not actually on, in inverted commas. OK, well, in 30,000 hours, I'll check back with you to see if you've been able okay. to replace, replace the, <laughs> LED, the LEDs one by... Actually, they do look as though they're replaceable, those LEDs. They look as though they're very standalone and they probably just pull in and out. I don't know. I, From just... what I remember putting it up, it did feel like it looked like a factory produced, okay. like a circuit board of LEDs. I don't think you could tamper with them. Fair enough. Anyway, 30,000 hours is an awful long time, isn't it? Yeah. Well done. OK. Right, now, my main review this time... Uh, Sorry, I'm just going to interrupt you. I've just been tapping away on the calculator. 3.4 years. Oh, not that long, then. Well, that's constantly on. <laughs> it's then, long enough. It? That's constantly on, never switching yeah. it off. Yeah, that's true. But then it is on all the time. It, oh, sh- hush. What have you got? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, an apology to people who um, think we're going to get a bit too techy on this show and people that are fed up with hearing me banging on about Bluetooth speakers. I will be quick, but I just thought I'd mention this Urbanista Sydney wireless mini speaker. Due to amazingly crazy Amazon pricing, this unit was supposed to be 40 quid and one day last week it was... 21 quid and on top of that a 30 percent off voucher so i ended up paying 14 quid for this and it's really very good oh i'm jealous as soon as i ordered this i realized that um you could get two of them and use it for stereo which i was talking about a little while ago but in one of these each side of the bed and i thought oh this will do it and i went back literally five minutes later to to think about ordering a second one at that price um and it was got completely Right back up to normal price. Aww. So I don't know how that happens so quickly. Anyway, I got it really cheap. Anyway, it's a really nice little speaker. It's got a nice cloth surround. The one I got was green because that was the one that was on the offer price. I didn't care about the, 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 the colour really. Micro USB charging is the only downside. I'd like it to be USB-C, but it's not. But, you know, well, hey, for 14 quid. Yeah. Um, and it's a perfect... I've, I've been testing it this week with various Bluetooth phones and other equipment. And for, it really is a perfect bedside speaker. It's small enough to be not seen out of the way. Um, quick and easy to 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 just switch on and um, and uh, uh, to, uh, hook up your Bluetooth uh, phone to it to listen at, when you go to sleep or whatever, and it, it works really really well. The only downside is, apart from the micro USB that I mentioned, is that. When you put a power plug into it permanently, if it times out, i.e. I, if you stop using it, you then do have to turn it back on again for the next time you use it. Right. But, you know, that, most of them are like that. Some of the anchor ones are not, but, you know, most of them are. Um, 
So Bluetooth 5, really dinky little thing, only five hours of playback time, but it's a small unit. This could really, really be put in a pocket. I think you'd be struggling to put it into a front jeans pocket, but you could certainly put it into a coat pocket or a side a side pocket in a cargo trouser. But if you had it by your bed permanently, then you could yeah. just leave it permanently plugged in, couldn't you? And you then could. You wouldn't have to you worry. Could. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So that five hours really wouldn't matter then. Yes. Um, one and a half hours to charge from flat. And it comes with a cable. It's also got a 3.5 millimeter audio in, so you can, if you want to, plug in something by cable. Um, IPX5 flash splash, flash splash resistant. Um, not the most powerful speaker in the in its class, but uh, it's very good. And if you keep it at around 70% volume, it's got good bass and a nice tone overall. Um, I think, to be honest, if I was paying 40 quid for this, then I probably wouldn't. I would have, I would have looked around um, at other options. The JBL right, yes. Go 3, for example, which is quite a, an interesting little unit. Um, JBL makes some good stuff, and that Go series are really I- interesting as well. But for 14 quid, it was a no-brainer, and it should almost almost have been on cheapest chips but not quite but i thought i would review it anyway now you can stop fast forwarding everyone you know what not my normal field of interest as you know ted but this one does look lovely it it looks like something robert's radios might have made yeah it really does look very very nice this one appeals and i'm very jealous 14 quid you did well there sir yeah, yeah, it was a bit of a bargain, and I've got it in my hand now. And I, in actual fact, I could put it in my front jeans pocket. Um, yeah, yeah, it's about not. It's not quite an inch wide, fat, you know. Yes. Um, so I think you could, if you wanted to, put it in your front jeans pocket. Really dinky little nice device. Anyway, I'm very impressed with it, and I'm glad I got it. But I wouldn't pay forty quid for it. <laughs> And you're going to have to go on talking, Mr. Salmon, because I love everybody today. I have no Room 101. What have you ah, got? I haven't got anything either. But ah. Ian Barton Ian Barton has. Ah, Judge and Barton he, has ruled. Indeed. He wants to put NHS management in there. Ooh, now he goodness. says, before, before, you ju- <laughs> before you jump on him, before yeah. you jump on him, <laughs> yeah. he says, I know that the NHS has recently become a national religion, but their management is deeply flawed in our local hospital near Crewe. Oh, OK, fair enough. I had to go to my local hospital to hospital for a, a CAT scan this morning. For many patients, including me, it is inaccessible by public transport. It has a serious parking problem. And this is what the NHS management is relating to, is the right. parking arrangements, parking. Okay. not what they do not, in not the front medical. line. Yes, okay. Most <laughs> of the time, people have to double park in the staff car park, and you can easily spend half an hour driving around looking for somewhere to park, he says. Today... I passed a construction site where they are constructing a new department. Great. More services for more people. Great. But they are digging up yes. one of the car parks to put the building on. So he reckons that um, it's going into Room 101 because anyone he, he reckons that anyone who is a worker but not a frontline key worker should be forced to arrive to work by public transport, walk or cycling. Now, we do know that Ian's a keen cyclist, yes. so he probably would say that. But there is a point here. And I do remember back to my time in Chichester, and I think I've mentioned this before on the show, the, the, the car parking at St. Richard's Hospital in Chichester is just diabolical. You just it, it, you just can't... You, people end up parking so far away and um, double parking and parking on grass verges and walking the rest of the way. You, maybe it's something that um, hospitals just don't think very clearly about about the demands that they're going to have on uh, people needing to get there but his solution is to make them not bring their cars um on one occasion at St. Richard's, I, I, again, I think I've told this story before, they actually impounded my car because I didn't know that I had to um, pay to park. And it was, uh, you know, th- th- they wouldn't let me... Have, well, they did in the end because yeah. I, made, I made such a fuss. But um, they, they, yeah, it, it was... It, parking at hospitals just seems to be a nightmare. And it is here as well. Glen Cluid, just down the road. My dad tells me when he goes down there, it, it's, you know, you've got to... You you hope your appointment's going to be at eight o'clock in the morning, so you can actually yes, get your yes. car anywhere near it. Anyway, yeah, Ian Barton. No, I, I I totally agree. Parking is parking is a terrible issue. I agree with the post. I respectfully disagree with Ian's solution to it, but absolutely. I mean, I remember we've talked before about hospital car parking where one has to where it's a pain display. 
So you arrive at a hospital and you have to somehow know how long you're going to be there and how much you need to pay for your car, which oh, is that was it. Yeah, absolutely that was it. barking. That's absolutely what ha- barking. Yeah, that's what, I ha- that's what happened with my impounding. That's exactly right. Um, I'd forgotten, and it was that. that my I time mean, when you go out. to a hospital appointment, you don't know if you're going to be in and out in ten minutes or yeah. sitting around for four hours waiting. So how on earth can you predict how much to pay for your parking? It, it's absolutely barking. <laughs> parking is barking, but I also agree, the space. the it, It's an issue that really does need serious attention. Indeed. And more operations by remote via Skype. Right, let's go from the grumpy to the happy, shall we? <laughs> Right, I'm going to, in gold star this time, I'm going to put ISPs. Um, If not worldwide, then certainly in the UK. I think it's probably a good shout out. We've we've praised NHS staff for their performance during lockdown. We've praised the supermarkets, well, most of them. And we've praised um, lots and lots of people. But we haven't really mentioned the ISPs. During lockdown, over the last 12 months, off and on, there's hardly been a blip. Um, great streaming, loads of really, really good connectivity, um, and all of us lazy people with nothing better to do. No, I'll take that back. All of us people that would like something to do but can't do anything except get online and <laughs> yes, do it. Yes. We are connected. Yes. yes. And um, now, uh, yes, of course, there's going to be isolated complaints about out cutouts and service dropouts. But generally, from where I sit, I think that over the last twelve months, the ISPs have done a really, really, really good job, and they, they, they. I think they deserve a gold star because, um, as I say, over the last twelve months. Whether it be from my MiFi with um, cellular connectivity or BT in our case with the router, it's it, there's hardly been a dropout at all, and they've done that. They've kept that thing going together very well. There must be people um, who work for these organisations off sick. They've got COVID themselves, and yet they, the service has been consistent. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm sorry if you disagree with that because in your case that hasn't been the case. But I think from where I sit, it looks like mostly that is true. I thoroughly agree, Ted. I mean, I do remember at the beginning of the first lockdown, people were even predicting and suggesting when the internet would crash and how they would cope when everybody wanted to watch Netflix at the same time and it would all come tumbling down. And it hasn't, no. as you say. No. I mean, it's like the, the the millennium bug that never happened. The, the, they've done a sterling job of we don't know what's gone on behind the scenes. There could be all sorts of horrific, desperate measures being taken that we're not aware of. But whatever yeah. has happened has happened fabulously. And, and you, you're quite right, Ted. Gold stars all round. Indeed. Next, n- n- next show, we'll praise the water board. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do a little bit of blatant self-advertising here. But actually, no. It, it, well, that's the ulterior motive. But I really do genuinely want to thank good people who have who have given me money, to put it bluntly. Uh, as you know, I'm very keen on my musical theatre. I write and I have a show called Santa Santa. Santa! We've been promoting the show for more than a decade now. It takes a heck of a long time to get a show off the ground. And we're making progress and we've reached the point where we're having the show professionally orchestrated for a 35-piece orchestra. And the hope, the dream that's becoming more of a realistic hope than a dream is to have a concert performance this Christmas, to which end I have started a GoFundMe campaign. I started it last Sunday and just before we came in to record, it stood at £1,792 kindly donated by wonderful people. And as I say, I can't help the fact that, of course, I'm doing a little dig for my campaign. Of course, I have hands up. But I really do feel that in the year we've just had and the difficult time that many, many, many people have been going through, it's phenomenal that people still have that kindness and that um, faith in projects such as my musical to be kind enough to put their hands in their pockets. So gold stars to all the people who've helped Santa Santa. Well done. That's it. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> Indeed. And in closing, I'd, I'd like to award a gold star to myself because I'm so great. You can have a gold star, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you put a £1,000 on my campaign page. <laughs> Enough. We'll be back in two weeks. We've Thank been... you for the salmon, Mrs. Salmon. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> enough. Enough. Whateverworks.works is where you'll find all the links to all the stuff we've been talking about, all the 
gorgeous things that you can be looking at and buying and over the coming fortnight before the next show. TezSalmon.com is where you'll find me, AidenBell.com for Aiden. The MeWe group is where we expect to see you and want to hear about whatever works in your life and those people around you. Yes, we're back in a fortnight, Aiden. In a, fort- a fortnight, Ted, yes. A favourite word. Is it still your favourite word or has that phase passed? It's my favourite <laughs> word of the fortnight. So, we have one more thing to say that works. Don't forget, whatever, whatever works, works! works.